This section is all in the standalone GCSE Physics, the triple science course. It's all about the uses and the hazards of radioactive emissions. Now firstly, to say we, we find them really, really useful. They can be useful in loads of different ways. Now the, what makes them more or less useful is the type of radiation and also the half-life. So you need to know the uses based on the half-life and based on the type of radiation that's used. We need to assess any risks that we have with, when we're using radioactive isotopes against the continuous dose that we receive by just background radiation. Now there's a really important point here to make that many people don't understand the risks involved with using radioactive isotopes and this leads to a higher perceived risk than the actual risk is. For example, if I was to tell you that, that your fruit has been irradiated, then you might presume that you couldn't eat that fruit, that that fruit would make you really, really ill, but that's not the case. And in fact, every single strawberry you buy from a supermarket has been irradiated. It's been irradiated to destroy any germs that were on it, and it means that it has a longer shelf life, it stops it from decaying as quickly because all the bacteria have been killed, but it hasn't become radioactive because it hasn't been contaminated. If I was to say that some strawberries have been contaminated with a radioactive isotope, don't eat the strawberries. There's a really important point then about using that language really, really accurately in your answers. So we need to assess the risk against normal background radiation. What does that mean? Background radiation is radiation which is present at all times because of natural or man-made sources. Some examples of natural sources are rocks and cosmic rays. So radiation coming from the ground and radiation coming from space. We can't avoid those. <laughs> but some examples of man-made sources might be nuclear weapons testing and nuclear accidents. Where you live and what you do for a living can actually affect the dose of background radiation that you get. Radiation dose is the total exposure to radioactive particles. If you like, it's how many radioactive particles are going to have hit that person. This is increased by time and increased by intensity. So if it's a more intense source or you stay near it for a longer time, you get a higher dose. And this is measured in a unit called sieverts. Now one sievert is a very, very large unit, so we tend to use millisieverts. And mentioned specifically is the conversion between millisieverts and sieverts. Here are some examples of some common background radiation sources. You don't need to remember specific values of the doses from these, but you do need to use those values to make comparisons. So it might be helpful to have some idea of relative dose numbers. So a chest X-ray is the most common form of X-ray, and that gives you a dose of 0.014 millisieverts. But a transatlantic flight, just going in an airplane across the Atlantic, going to America on your holidays maybe, is 0.08 millisieverts. So that's a lot larger than having a chest x-ray. So you can see there's the relative risk of having a chest x-ray needs to be weighed up against other background sources. Working in a power station for a whole year gives you a dose of 0.18 millisieverts. So it's not a large dose because just living in Cornwall for one year, Cornwall has an unusually high dose of radiation coming from the rocks, or ground radiation. Just living in Cornwall for a year actually gives you a dose of 6.9 millisieverts. So you can see that working in a nuclear power station is a lot less hazardous than living in Cornwall. An acute dose which would lead to actually you feeling ill, lead to radiation poisoning, would be a thousand millisieverts. So one sievert. One sievert in a short amount of time would actually make you feel pretty ill. That would give you radiation poisoning. And a dose that the Chernobyl workers, those that responded quickly, those that were in the power station at the time of the accident, they had a typical dose of around 6,000 sieverts. And half of those people had died within one month. So that's an idea of the relative risks involved with radiation doses. You do often see background radiations shown in a pie chart. It's a good, good example of somewhere where we want to show the proportions of things, we want to show the percentage of certain things, we use a pie chart. You can see most of the background radiation comes from radon and thoron gas in the air, or about half of it. About 15% comes from medical uses, about 13% from the rocks, although that would be higher in somewhere like Cornwall. 12% comes from space, and that would be higher if you're flying in an airplane very high up. That's why you get a higher dose if you take a transatlantic flight or if you work on an airline, you do get a higher dose of radiation. And around 11% just comes from food and drinks. Now, man-made sources like nuclear weapons tests and occupational risks like working in a hospital or working in a nuclear power station actually account for a tiny percentage of the background radiation that everyone in the UK gets. Now, you don't need to remember these units, you don't need to remember these figures, but you do need to be able to use them and discuss them in questions. So I think it's useful for you to have some idea of what sort of sizes they are and how to use those units.